did it again. Another Missouri Valley win in historic fashion, this time with 690 yards of offense. Yes. Gonna take off and run. Walker makes this guy so dangerous. Inside the five touchdown. And a different freshman stealing the show. Good carry. Plus, he might take it to the house again. Ah, 45 yards down this one. Now the Bison can claim their ninth straight Missouri Valley Football Conference championship send 14 seniors out to the right way. It's the Bison and the Coyotes, and it starts now. This is the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. Hello and welcome out to the Fargo Dome as we are getting you set for North Dakota State and South Dakota here on senior day and it's a special senior day because the bison are doing something a little bit different we saw the harvest helmet get used a little bit we saw the all green look honoring code green and uh this time we're doing something very special as we welcome you here to the set beth hool kyle emmanuel alex egan here with you for the next hour we're talking about the helmet it's a helmet the new helmet the bison putting snorty yeah, on there a little ode to tradition on this senior day what do you think Kyle? i like it i like it a lot and as we were talking about before um they do all the cool things once you leave now they've been <laughs> gone for a while but uh i never got to use the harvest helmet definitely didn't get to see snorty but th this kind of brings me back to the dakota field days and i, I love it i love the, the throwback the tradition it's so you know it's r such a rich tradition here at NDSU, so I love them bringing this back. I think it's a good look, too. I think it is, I too. think they could still be the logo, and it I would be could. okay with it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I love it. You know, we did talk about it. They're able to do these things, Kyle, because of your contribution yes. to NDSU football. So don't ever forget <laughs> yes. that, okay? Well, well, You're well, important, too. Well, we can say that, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's just because they... They kind of I think started, it's a, it's they a started thing venturing now. out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Before, I mean, we got yellow jerseys, gold jerseys. Yeah, and it was like yellow the jerseys. biggest thing yeah. Yeah. ever. So, see, you got you got to contribute to something. You got to be a part of at least here, something. Here we cool. are talking fashion again, Alex. Yes, I know. It's the best thing that we can ever do. These boys. Well, let's get into uh, some fashion. senior day <laughs> conversation so well, I can steer you away. Yeah, from, uh, as they honor the past, they're also honoring 14 seniors today for the Bison. They'll be honored uh, in the a pregame ceremony and we will bring that to you in full so don't worry you're not going to miss any of those 14 seniors that get honored today but uh, Kyle you went through senior senior day senior week uh, a few years back and what was kind of a, your takeaway from what that was well it's an emotional week it's pretty cool though because every single senior has a chance to address the team you know you, it's something you don't get to do a lot it's not an individual sport and and we definitely don't treat it that way so you get a chance after practice every single senior gets a chance to address the team the coaches the staff everyone so it's an emotional from that standpoint but also at the same time you get to run out of the tunnel as an individual which is something that never happens it happens one time fortunately for these seniors this probably won't be their last home game but it's still the fact it's a regular season it's a great way to just kind of culminate your time here at NDSU. Well, and I think it's fantastic. You kind of get that emotional part of it out of the way before the playoffs, that there is yeah, that senior yeah, day part absolutely. because you have so much else riding once you get into the to the playoff season. It, it really is. Emo I remember guys, and I, I have to admit, I was close to tears after you run out of the tunnel. It's like, this might be the last time. There was guys crying, you know, and it, it, you think it might take away from the game, but I really don't think it does. I think, if anything, it motivates, especially the younger guys. So let's do this one more time for these seniors. So what do you remember about your time running out of the tunnel are, are we about to show it we we may or not i think we got video of 2014 this is your senior class is that me that's no. not me it's not you oh it's that's john bracket. oh i was gonna say I, that doesn't look <laughs> looks, like me. a little different than you but <laughs> this is from your senior class and uh guys that you got to to spend a lot of time well, with yeah well you're i mean you're seeing it was especially emotional there's that's like i said i it's hard to to keep the tears in a little bit because this was coach Kleiman's first senior class and and uh, we were you know we were able to be the, his his first senior class and able to win a national championship with it as well. So, um, it's Kleiman just, wiped his eye after you ran by. Does that mean? I think it's because I got eye black on him actually. Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> if you do, we, if I don't we see it a little bit longer. He does have some eye black. Yeah, on his I think face. that was that was probably for me. But no, it was cool. I mean, we were in senior class our, our freshman year. We won a national championship, but that was the first one, and we got a chance to win all four. So it's. <laughs> 
It's a special. Yeah, there, there's the eye black. <laughs> I think that's for me. I'm not sure. You left your mark. Exciting, is that exciting to see you know some of these guys back in a Bison uniform? Some of these guys that you played with? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's exciting times. Yeah, I, I, Adam Keller actually is in town <laughs> this weekend. So the, the I'm gonna kicker. convince him to come join us. But you know what? I think it's super cool about this is you talked about uh, the parody here that that was Coach Kleiman's first senior day uh, that was his first year as the head coach not who you guys were recruited to play for but who you ended up finishing your career with a similar situation going on here with Matt Entz today as well a little bit of a different in the way that things were handed off this year obviously but but uh, I mean that's a, a really special moment in and of itself it really was especially you know coach Glenn, like you said he wasn't here when we got here but he came from Northern Iowa and he really embraced the Bison culture not only as a position coach then as a defensive coordinator then as a head coach so he was a guy we wanted to play for. Obviously, we all loved Coach Bull and, and everything he did for this program as well. But Coach Kleiman, we kind of felt like he was one of those guys. He stuck with us. And a lot of people thought this this program, might, this dynasty might be over at three championships. He stuck around and uh, he stayed with us and, and you know, we were able to reward him with the he, national championship. He did okay while he was here. Not bad. He did okay. Yeah, he's, awesome. he's doing bad. pretty well now. He's, <laughs> he's doing at Kansas State. Yeah, so. he's doing all right. They're also debuting new helmets down there at Kansas State. We'll get out of the helmet talk. Just, just for you, Beth. All right, let's go down. Uh, to the field, the guys that will be on the call, Brian, Sean, Lee, Timmerman, and Ryan Gellner. Happy Senior Day to you guys. Yeah, guys, one of the great moments in a NDSU season is this Senior Day. It is pretty special when those seniors walk through the tunnel and individually get recognized. NDSU does it right. I think so. It's just nice to for, and Kyle, as Kyle talked about, each individual player gets their moment with the team during the week, and then to come out of the tunnel by yourself and have everyone appreciate what you've done in the last, for most of these guys, five years, it's uh, it, it's pretty special, and I can imagine how emotional it, uh, it can be. And it's fun for all of us as fans, as broadcasters. It's a fun moment. It's something you remember every year. Well, you watch these kids come in when they're 17, 18 years old, and you watch them leave as men when they're 22 and 23, and we get to know them really well, too. And it's it's weird to see them grow. It's weird to see them go on and get married and have children of their own as they go on. And I think that's what's kind of cool to see their development, not only as players, but also as people in this program. And it's been fun to watch each one of those players. As you're looking at a freshman there. Each one of those players buy into this program and go through the transition like Brian talked about and really come up with that once a bison, always a bison. You start to see it, especially as a senior. Uh, yeah, but I think that is ingrained to most of these athletes while they're redshirting and Coach Kramer has a hold of them. I, I really think that's when it all when it starts. And you talk to so many people like, you know, Kyle, who've been through the program uh, or the, the seniors throughout the years that we've talked with. I mean, how important just the workouts are to build that that team bond and that once a bison always a bison and then somehow you got to flip the switch there's a game to play today yeah there is a game to play today and it's an important game for north dakota state a victory today and the bison win at least a share of their ninth straight valley title there's something to be said about that that's a special accomplishment as well we're ready for senior day down here we'll go back upstairs to the crew upstairs all right thank you very much guys uh, it's going to be an exciting day an emotional day obviously but there is a football game to be played there is also some gift cards to be given away and that's where we will go out to the tailgate lot for this tailgate report with mike morgan all right we are out here in the tailgate section for another bison tailgate trivia big thanks to big herbs for sponsoring our 50 dollars gift card you bet and that we're always appreciative of uh, everybody uh, not only at horace but out at the fargo south place so stop by there i've got two contestants to play uh, ta tailgate trivia my first contestant is Tondra Kraft. Tondra, are you nervous at all? Because I'm sweating. No. You're sweating. <laughs> Could be that heater. All right, here we go. From touchdowns, field goals, extra points, and two point conversions, how many players on the Bison football team have scored so far this year? Is it 16 or 24? And you can ask the crowd. 16. I think it'd be 16. 16? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with 16. 16 is correct. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Very good. Very good. That was awesome. Look at that. Such support from the crowd. There you go. Thank you. That was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> Pressure's on. We have not had anyone get this wrong in the three years that we've been doing it. So, your name? Brad. Brad? Here we go. Brad Olson. 
Trey Lance holds the Bison record for most consecutive passes without an interception. You know that. Yep. In fact, it's 182 attempts. The old record was 152. Who held that old record? Was it Easton Stick hmm. or Carson Wentz? Crowd? Easton. Easton. With Easton Stick. Easton Stick, and this is an intelligent crowd. E they are correct. Hey. There's your gift. Thank you. Very good. That, you're fired up. Yes. Okay. How about a crowd go bison, huh? Yeah. All right. Much more to come here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Stay with us. to the Parker Dome, the Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show continuing on as North Dakota State gets set to take on uh, the Coyotes from South Dakota. You see the uh, the visitors coming into the Fargo Dome today and the last time they were here in 2015 and walked out with a W. That was a game that a lot of Bison fans would like to forget but uh, yeah so they've, they've had some success here in the dome in the recent past. Let's learn a little bit more about our visitors from Vermillion. Ryan Gellner standing by with the voice of the Coyotes. Ryan. Guys, Joe Van Gore is fresh off a trip to Hawaii with the men's basketball team at USD. Finds himself in Fargo, North Dakota today. Split seasons. It's tough this time of the year as a broadcaster, isn't it? It is. Uh, yeah, November has always been since I rejoined the Coyotes uh, in 2012. But uh, I finally got a choice to go on a trip or stay and do uh, football. So for the first time in uh, nine years as voice of the Coyotes, I missed a game. And uh, what a game as uh, the Coyotes dominated uh, Youngstown State. Definitely, Ryan, they have some momentum coming into today's game with the Bison. Offensively, the Coyotes are good. They can score, it seems like, when they want to score. Let's talk about the offensive side of the field. Quarterback's playing well. Well, Austin Simmons uh, dedicated himself to add running to his repertoire. Everybody knows he's got a gun for an arm. But the thing is, his running ability, uh, complemented with uh, Kai Henry, uh, the running game has uh, really, this part of the season has really come to fore for the Coyotes. It takes the pressure uh, off the, uh, the passing game, but uh, also the offensive line. It's young, but it's improving. That was much misaligned last year, but uh, they have really come together. And, uh, you know, toward the, uh, the end of the season here, they're playing their best football. The question mark on South Dakota is the defense. They've been up, they've been down. What's it going to take today to get them to play well? Get North Dakota State off the field. I mean, as many years as I've been coming up here, even in the Division II days, what North Dakota State prides itself is third down conversions. And then, of course, consequently for the Bison defense, it's getting teams off the field. But I think the Coyotes have to get the Bison off the field on third down. I mean, they have a, they, they wear you down. Uh, they'll go on a drive, they'll take up time, or, you know, the Coyotes have been susceptible to big plays as well. So big plays and getting them off on third down will be a big thing. If I hear you right, time of possession today is huge. Whoever wins that may be the, the best side of the scoreboard today. And uh, also uh, this late in the season, unfortunately, uh, turnovers have been a bane for the Coyotes and also uh, penalties uh, as well. It uh, has certainly uh, been a factor in a couple games uh, here recently. So. Uh, Guys got to play clean, can't turn the ball over, you know, and the, and the Bison are very opportunistic. Have a good call today, and welcome back to uh, 30 degrees and 20 degrees in sun, though. Oh, not bad. Thanks, Ryan. All right, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, the, you heard them talking about the quarterback matchup, and that's obviously where a lot of people are going to have their eyes on today. So let's take a look at what we're going to see from the two quarterbacks going today. Obviously, it's going to be Trey Lance for North Dakota State, but Austin Simmons comes in as a pretty capable passer. We'll talk about him in just a minute, but let's get into some of Trey Lance's numbers in this remarkable freshman campaign. Are you guys starting off the trade for Walter Payton? Are we Absolutely. on that trade? Absolutely. We're on that trade? I mean, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of confidence in uh, the voters and the people who have a right to a vote somehow. Uh, <laughs> but I think he absolutely, hands down, is 
the best offensive player He's and the best quarterback. He's making a great case for it, yeah. Yeah, he, his, his efficiency is so impressive. I say it every single week, but that that the fact that he hasn't turned the ball over yet is uh, it's it's unprecedented. It really is. It's it's unbelievable, especially for a young quarterback. He has one turnover in his career with NDSU. That happened in his first ever start against Butler. So that's that's what we're seeing. And we mentioned that Trey's throwing. He's got he's thrown 21 touchdowns. He's thrown over 1,700 yards. But here's where he's throwing it to. And maybe what we saw last year as we take a look at this uh, at these numbers of the pass distribution. Uh, for Trey Lance. Maybe last year we saw Easton Stick lock in on Darius Shepard a little bit more. So a lot of the throws are going to wide receivers. We're not seeing that with Trey Lance this year. He's distributing the ball all over. Uh, yeah, hitting a lot of different guys, a lot of different position groups. Obviously the Titans dominating in that touchdown That's a Tyler Roll effect. <laughs> and, and we uh, have had a lot of fun talking about that, teasing Tyler Roll about that. But the fact is, is that's a part that's open and that's a part um, that's just a lot of teams can't account for. I think it speaks a lot to the skill position of NDSU. I think you have capable guys all over the place, and it also speaks that Trey trusts a lot of people. Like you said, sometimes quarterbacks, you'll see them get locked in, and they'll just throw it up to, to the one guy that they have trusted. Trey has trust in everyone on this team, and it's it's made it's been a big factor in this offense and how good they've been this year. And he's thrown 10 balls to fullbacks this year. <laughs> fullbacks have 10 receptions. Everyone's getting in on the party. <laughs> well, and that's, that's you know, insane. Matt Enns even kind of joked, Alex, yeah. with you this week. He's, you said, you know, who's he creating a connection with? Matt said, who isn't he who isn't exactly. bonding yeah. with? And that's, that's so great. impressive to see, especially from such a young guy. You know, we got to see um, Peyton Manning talk uh, a couple of weeks ago here in Fargo, and he talked about trying to build that connection uh, with people and how to come in as a young leader on a team. And, boy, Trey has mastered that effect. Yeah, Trey been pretty much everything you could have hoped for in a redshirt freshman way more he has yeah. far exceeded my expectations all right let's take a look at austin simmons stats and he comes in a very capable passer and uh, unlike the guy that we saw last week for western illinois he can run the football and he's been running it pretty effectively as we heard uh, jeff van gore talk about as well well i think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the missouri valley i really do and i mean obviously i, I would take trey over him but uh, outside of trey lance i mean you look around He's, he might be one of the better quarterbacks in this in this league. He, he leads the league in passing yards. He does turn it over a decent amount, but he, he's going to sling it around the, the field. They're going to go really fast offensively. This is a good South Dakota offense. Don't make, don't let their record fool you. They put up 32 a game. They also give up around 32 a game, but they are a capable offense. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one to watch. That's another up-tempo offense that, that the Bison saw last week with Western Illinois. So they're ready for that tempo. They're ready yeah. for it. But. It's tough to see. It's tough to, to well, be prepared for. Coach Jen said they work on it every single week. You know, yeah. even if even if they're not going against a, an up tempo team, they're working on it every single week. So they're going to be ready for it. Well aware they have to prepare for the unexpected and teams yeah. to do something a little bit different against them. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's get into um, the fun stuff. The pick'em. Uh, last week, my colleagues here, um, they were they were good. You guys did good. Let's take a look Thank at you. our last week scores there. Uh, Kyle, a uh, rough go for you. I think you went two and four last week, Beth. Three and three, that was good, but uh, somebody went five and one. Who was that? Oh, the guy that was trying to backpedal last week? Yeah, you were yeah. I don't, don't want to hear it. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our overall standings as well. Kyle, 15 and 12. Beth going through 16 11. She's pulled into second place. Uh, officially. I'm not, I've never been good at these. 20 and you are seven. The one who I know you brought this up. That. I'm aware. Part. I never said okay. I was good at them. Let's get into our picks for this week. Uh, first one up Missouri State, Illinois State. This game's already in progress. Who'd you take? I took Illinois State. Yeah, 14 to 9 right there. Uh, right now, Illinois State's up. Uh, Illinois State as well. Yeah, I've given up on the Bears. I have Missouri State not so great this year. Uh, Illinois State, the easy choice. Illinois State's probably a seeded playoff team right now. Let's Absolutely. move on to our next matchup. That is Youngstown State at Indiana State. Oh, boy, the Penguins. Youngstown State's falling apart, and I took Indiana State, locked it in on Monday. Yeah. You know what? I, I committed to Youngstown State early in the year, and I, I'm just going to keep I'm uh, gonna keep. They're going to yeah. pull through for me eventually. Uh, without Nathan Mays back there, I think it's going to be very tough for the Penguins to be effective. 17 to 10 currently Wait, Indiana State. Indiana I've got to make yeah. my move somewhere on yeah, you. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. 17 to 10 at halftime in that game. All right, next game in Illinois. It's Southern Illinois and Western Illinois. So, Southern's making a playoff push, and I think they're going to be in, and I took Southern in this yeah, game. Yeah, Southern Illinois as well. Uh, Southern's got something to play for when the Bison go out there next week. That's not going to be Absolutely. an easy one. Yep. So I took Southern as well. They're up 7 nothing. Okay, the other one that's going on, that team just to the south of us here. This is a big one. This was based on uh, strictly because I don't want South Dakota State to win. I actually think they might, but I went with Northern Iowa. I picked South Dakota State way Always too many times this year. given the excuses. Yeah, it goes them. against my better uh, my heart, but here we go, SDSU. Northern Iowa, if they win this game, and I picked them to win this game, if they win it, 
they can become a playoff seed, a high playoff seed. South Dakota State could be playing on Thanksgiving. Or they might not be in. Or they, they could miss it all together. Yeah. yeah. So, some uh, interesting scenarios. That okay, and then we there. also went with uh, some bigger games. Oh, Minnesota and Iowa. Not a huge Gophers fan. I went with the Hawkeyes. I think they're going to get this one done at home. I went with the Gophers. Uh, I've got confidence in them. I think they're riding high. I have every reason to pick Minnesota, but because two of my seven losses this year, because of Minnesota, I have chosen to not pick them. So I'm going with Iowa. Go Hawkeyes. And then finally, Oklahoma and Baylor. I want Baylor. I think they have, they, they're undefeated. They're a sneaky undefeated team. They have college game day in Waco. I think that energizes them. I think they get the win. They pull the upset over Oklahoma. I, I'm right there with you. I think Baylor's got the upset. I think Oklahoma uh, has, has run into some tough times. Yeah, I'm going with the Sooners. Chip and Joanna are both from Waco, the Gaines family, but I'm going with the Sooners. Just had to throw that random piece of knowledge out to you. And then we've got uh, Kyle, your pick for today's game. The Bison are averaging 41-4. 12.6 against. What are you taking? Well, today? I do think South Dakota scores a little bit more than maybe we're used to, but I, I still think they get. Obviously, NDC gets this done. I go 49-17 Bison. 49-17. You heard it here first. That's what Kyle says. The final score will be. There's two old friends right there. They know each other very well. As Matt Edge played for Bob Nielsen. We got much more to come here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pre-Game Show. No doubt, in the, no doubt in my mind. Well, I don't think either one of us. Neither one. He, he's pretty organized. He's always the early guy. I might be pushing. Come Ty. on, come on, come on. Uh, Goose was twice the athlete. Twice the athlete. Oh, this guy. Yeah, this guy. No doubt. No doubt. This guy. Yeah, I have fun with Goose. Yes. I'm this really guy. Bad. This guy passed me going 80 the other day on the interstate. New Jersey in him. He's got New Jersey still in him. Me. I, he I just has all the terrible. You get trophies, Special you get rings, you get stuff yeah. everywhere. Probably this guy. There wouldn't be a moment of silence. Well, stay busy. Goose. This guy. This guy. Yeah. Depends what night. <laughs> Come on. I don't have it. I don't have it. It's all right. I can admit it. This guy. Come on. I have fun. This guy. Did you what? Not respond to your text message. Uh, this business, you better have that phone on. Yeah, nonstop. <laughs> Best hair, also, not going to Gazer. Don't worry, Goose, I'm not winning that one either. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. All right, let's let's uh, let's go down to the field. Ryan Geller standing by with our Stanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Injury Report. Is here, and the name of the game today is kind of a theme that Kyle and I will talk about in just a little bit. We're gonna talk to the doctor about adrenaline, and um, adrenaline, as we saw in the NFL this week, it's a funny thing. It can lead to some uh, pretty crazy things. What is adrenaline, first of all? So uh, adrenaline is the substance that's made in the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland sits on top of your kidneys, and it's really there for a very positive purpose. Um, we always talk about the fight or flight response in the human body. Uh, when you release adrenaline into your body, it gives you the ability, uh, when you think back to the old caveman days, to be able to protect yourself. That you can, if you've got a tiger running at you, you can run away at, the, at a faster pace than you've ever done it. Or if you need to lift something, you've got more strength than you need to. So what it really does is it gives your uh, body the response that it opens up the blood vessels, gets more blood flow to the muscles, and that allows more oxygen, which allows those muscles to work at levels that they're not normally used to. So do athletes have more adrenaline than a regular person, or is it just that they have bigger, faster, stronger muscles? So first of all, they have bigger, faster, stronger muscles because of the conditioning that they've done, but they're also conditioning themselves around the use of adrenaline. So um, when, when you think about it, they're putting themselves into stressful situations that cause the, the brain to stimulate the adrenal glands to release the adrenaline. And the more you do that, 
the better the response is going to be, the quicker you're going to get the response you need for it in a positive way. And you know, it can have some negative effects too. When you think about uh, when you're anxious and you're uh, uh, concerned about uh, events or you're getting ready for a sporting event, we talk about the butterflies mm -hmm. in the stomach. So you'll see athletes that the response to adrenaline can be there in the, the locker room throwing up before a game and stuff uh, that can have some of those negative effects too. And then quickly, is there a way to control that? Can you control it better than I can? Can the next person control it better? Or is it all internalized in how you control that? So really, conditions response. Okay. The more that you condition yourself to be in a position where you're utilizing that response, the better your body's gonna control it for sure. Now, with some of the stuff that went on this week in the NFL, I guess the, the next question is, can you control the impulse right. to do bad things with it? The adrenaline sets you up so that you can perform at a, a level greater than what your body is used to doing um, or what you think you might be able to do, but it doesn't give you the control of the impulse to, to do something that's good or bad. That's still a whole different level with it. Good stuff from the medical perspective. Appreciate the insights, and uh, Kyle, and I'll ha Kyle and I will have much more uh, in just a little bit. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Happy to do it. Back to you guys. All right, let's take a look at who is in and out today for the Bison. Jalen Bussey, who had that phenomenal fourth quarter last week against Western Illinois. He is not going to be available today. <laughs> Yeah. Injuring his hand this week in practice. He's so. just leaving the people wanting more. Yeah, just uh, he's probably, we may not see him the rest of the year is what the uh, prognosis is on that. Some good news, though. Garrett Malstrom, the fullback, is expected to play today because he has missed the last couple weeks. Yeah, so, healthy so and good. looking good. I did have the chance to talk to Jabril Cox, though, uh, before the, or just before our pregame show started. He says he's feeling good, but he's out precautionary reasons. We're also catching word that Aaron Mercadell will not be available today. So that's two starting linebackers that the Bison will be without today. That's They're depth. You know, their depth at linebacker, especially the fact that the last last week, last couple of weeks, they've started to move Derek Tuska yeah. back to that linebacker <laughs> position oh, as well. <laughs> uh, right? It's just absolutely insane. So they've got options. I'm still confident they'll be able to adjust there. Yeah, certainly something that the defense will have to adapt and, and work with. That's just the name of the game this late in the season. You're going to have to deal with injuries. All right, let's go down to the field. Ryan Gellner and Kyle Emanuel standing by. Show us how it's done, guys. Yeah, guys, this week, how it's done, we've turned to the NFL and our NFL expert, a fifth-round draft pick of the San Diego Chargers, Kyle Emanuel. You looked at the NFL this week, and we saw something ugly at the end of that Cleveland Browns game, and by now, most of you know what we're talking about. So how it's done this week is how you keep your composure in a big-time college football game or in the NFL, and that was my question to you this week. Obviously, you're taught to go hard, go 100%. But when things go bad, how do you keep your emotions in check? Well, right, it's such a mentally tough sport, right? You talk about the mental side of football and you're usually not talking about impulses and, and being angry and things like that. When it comes in, it's much easier said than done. Look, I, I've been angry on a football field. I've seen a lot of fights in, on the practice field, in games, whatever, what have you. But you have to, to me, you have to be able to look at the bigger picture and you have to look at who else you're affecting. I know it's easy when you're angry to just make an impulse decision, but you're affecting your team. Miles Garrett is going to be out now for the rest of the season. For a team that's trying to make a playoff push, you're affecting more than just yourself. So that's got to be something. It's almost to be something you have to think about before the game even starts, because once you get in that moment, it's hard to stop. You've been pushed to yeah. the edge. I mean, you've been pushed least. hard. Yep. Yep. Anything in your brain ever say stop or no or can't? It, yes, it, it has to. It, it has to, especially especially when you're in a game. You know, practice, you, you, you'll get in some scrums. It's kind of like with brothers and family. Sure. You get in some fights and things happen. But when you're in a game, especially a national televised game, something in your in your brain has to, it just has to click. Like the, you're affecting so much so much more than just, than, what you, than just yourself. And you have to look at the bigger picture of things. You can't let one 15 second decision affect the rest of your season. Or in his, in his case, his career. His career might be altered by this. For the, rest of, for the rest of his days in the NFL. And it certainly affected his team as well because the entire team gets affected when you lose your best defensive player. But let's talk about that side of it, though. From the flip side, when you see guys start protecting their teammates, I love it. that must make you feel good. I love it, absolutely. We were actually taught that at NDSU. Like, you go and you protect your guy. And you don't want to 
what Marquise Pouncey might have done might have been a little bit excessive, but I don't think the majority of people watching that had zero issue with it. He's protecting his guy. That's what you're taught to do. Usually you're trying to de-escalate things, not make them worse. Um, but I had no I had no issue with what, what Pouncey did. He's protecting his guys, which you gotta do. You know what I like about this? I like that you're gonna protect me now that we're buddies. Uh, okay, yeah. You got my back. <laughs> I guess you're right, I have to. <laughs> back to you guys. All right, we're back out in the tailgate section. I've got two new uh, contestants, and I've got a big crowd behind me, and they're all fired up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start out with you, sir. What's your name? Corey Thompson. Corey Thompson. We are playing for a $50 gift card at Big Irv's, and no one has ever gotten this incorrect since we started the game, so I'm hoping that you'll continue. All right, here's your question, all right? The current Bison winning streak dates back to the middle of the 2017 football season. How many games in a row have they won right now? 31 or 37? And you can ask the crowd. 31. 31. 31, 31 is correct. Right. You did it. There you go. There you go. Congratulations. All right. All right. No indecision at all on anybody's part. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> such. It must make you feel better that this is such a studious crowd. Everybody knows what's going on. All right, your name, please? Candace Philbrick. Okay, Candace, where are you from? Fargo. Okay, Candace. Today is senior day. Do you know that? I did. Okay. How many NDSU players will be recognized before the game? Is it 14 or 21? And I think I heard somebody saying that over there. It's 14. Is it 14? Is she correct? Yes. yes. Of course she's correct. It's 14. Yes, Candace. Very good. Congratulations, and congratulations to you playing. Congratulations to the whole crowd. Yay, go Bison! Woo! This is the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pre-Game Show. We are fieldside as North Dakota State and South Dakota do battle in about 25 minutes. Lee Timmerman, Ryan Gellner, and Brian Sean, who will call today's action. It is a big football game inside the Fargo Dome. Brian, we've come down the stretch run now, and it's a big one as North Dakota State and the Coyotes do battle. Yeah, I think it's important for North Dakota State, too, with some of the injuries on defense. The Bison are very thin right now at linebacker. We've seen Jabril Cox in street clothes. We've seen Aaron Mercadell in street clothes, which might mean you see guys like Michael Tutsi and James Kayser coming down to fill those roles today. That'll be interesting to see how NDSU counters that for the back half. Who gets the reps and where coming up in this contest? Well, just to Go add ahead, one more thing on that, too, is not only will Tutsi and Kayser have to come down, but Dawson Weber is going to have to play a very big role, too, today because he'll have to team up with James Hendricks in that safety position. So, yeah, you'll have all those guys playing different positions, but Weber's going to be asked to do a lot more today. And, of course, the easiest way to take pressure off the defense Pretty simple. Keep the offense on the field. Yeah, at the end of the day, Tyler Roll, I think, wants to establish the ground game and put together a couple of 12, 14 play meat grinder drives and try to take time off the clock and keep the Coyote offense out of rhythm on the sideline. That's going to be a big key, I think, especially early in this game to set that tone. And on paper, this is the team the Bison can do that against. Yeah, I, I think they have an opportunity. Uh, they're not a big defensive line at all. There's certainly a lot of talent there led by Greenfield, but there's not a lot of size. Uh, linebacker group is, uh, they asked Jack Cochran to do a lot, so if you can get him out of position mm -hmm. just a little bit, there's going to be some running lanes and some running holes there, I think. Let's get to our Dakota Magic Casino keys to the football game, and we start with penalty cleanup, and we We've talked about this now the last couple of weeks, and it really is something the Bison coaches have been focusing on, and that is clean up those penalties. Some are good penalties. Sometimes they're over-aggressive. Sometimes they're too physical, but there's some bad penalties that NDSU wants to clean up as well. Yeah, I think a lot of the pre-snap stuff, I think some of the stuff after the whistle at times has been an issue, but the team they're playing today has also had a lot of penalty issues. South Dakota has committed 27 penalties for 284 yards in the last two games. So that is as big of an issue for the Coyotes as it is for NDSU. I think one other thing with penalties before we move on to is that sometimes we forget how young this NDSU team is. And young teams have a tendency to have penalties. And so, yes, the Bison have had too many. But they're also, you know, not loaded with seniors like last year. Our second key to the football game brought to you by Dakota Magic and Casino is run quarterback run. We've got two teams, Lee, that can really run 
the football. Let's start with Trey Lance. 84 runs, 657 yards off those runs. And then Simmons, 94 runs, 648 yards off of those runs. I, the design run aspect of it for USD is very important. It's a huge aspect of what they do. A lot of downhill uh, quarterback run thing. But uh, some of the, the one thing you don't see there, I think, is minus yardage from the quarterbacks. And that goes to the offensive lines a little bit. Trey Lance so far this year has only lost 29 yards in the running game. This is including sacks, whereas Simmons is at 199. So you can tell just by that number which offensive line is much better. That's a big difference. And then finally, our third key to the football game, pretty simple, it's turn them over. USD had 10 turnovers in their first six games. They have 23 total turnovers, Brian, 11 fumbles, 12 interceptions. And I think that's why South Dakota right now is sitting at four and six instead of maybe six and four. Had the turnover issue has been a big problem. When you look at a team like North Dakota State, the Bison have turned the ball over five times all season, plus eight turnover margin. When you look at South Dakota, minus eight because they've turned it over 23 times. Last week was the first game they had not turned it over at all. So that is a step in the right direction. And if they want to have any chance of winning today, they have to take care of the football today. South Dakota, of course, won the last time they were in this building. The Bison, of course, were reminded about that this week. When we come back, we'll introduce you to 14 Bison seniors, bring you the program live as those seniors walk through the tunnel for the final time on Senior Day from the Fargo Dome. We're back right after this. up this week's Herdline News. It's a simple, the Bison win, and they clinch the Valley and a home spot in those FCS playoffs. We rewind to last week, and what a debut for Bison freshman Jalen Bussey. The running back from Brandon, Florida, had a team-high 173 all-purpose yards in his collegiate debut as North Dakota State beat Western Illinois a week ago. Bussey entered the game in the fourth quarter in his first attempt, a 65-yard touchdown. He later added a 50-yard kick return and then a 45-yard touchdown run on consecutive plays and finished with six rushes for 123 yards and two touchdowns. For that, he was named the Missouri Valley Football Conference Newcomer of the Week. Huge honors for senior defensive end Derek Tuska. He was invited to the East-West Shrine Bowl game. Tuska ranks sixth in the FCS, averaging just over a sack a game. He has a career 25 and a half sacks and had a sack in seven of nine games this year. Tuska and that Bison defense will have their hands full today with South Dakota. Task number one, stop the quarterback. I asked head coach Matt Entz how they plan to do just that. Coach, let's start on defense. Uh, it'll be a nice test for your defense today. It's gonna, yeah, definitely. Uh, no, a lot of tempo. Um, gonna try to get as many plays in as they can. They've done a nice job of uh, developing their, their run game uh, as the season has progressed. And uh, we're going to have to do a great job of defending from shots to quarterback run game, to traditional run game. And uh, they cause some challenges. And so we got to do a great job on third down getting off the field. When we get a chance to get a change of possession, we need to take advantage. We've known for a while the quarterback's got a great arm. This year we're seeing his feet. He can move the ball uh, with the ball in his hands. Oh, definitely. They, they do a lot of things uh, RPO-wise. Uh, design quarterback run game so we're gonna have to defend the entire field and uh, he's a tough kid uh, you know but that doesn't surprise me especially in this league uh, you have to have a level of toughness to compete every week with a team that can score like South Dakota does obviously you'll want your offense to stay on the football field as long as possible definitely and uh, you know that's one of the things that we've talked about all week long is that uh, at NDSU both sides of the football and special teams all can help one another be successful on game day and if that's our special teams giving us great field position, defensive getting stops, and, and offense converting on third downs, they, they all help one another, and we got to work together and get a big team win today. Speaking of team win, it is senior day. You've got uh, 14 seniors that will come through the tunnel for the last time in the regular season. It's a big part of what NDSU is. Address those seniors just a little bit. Well, you know, the 14 guys have a, a special place in, in my thought process and in, 
into, into my family just because they're my first senior class. And uh, uh, last night we talked about they're the 125th senior class of uh, NDSU football. And uh, what, a, what a special situation that those guys have put themselves in. They've worked extremely hard, have been unselfish, uh, tireless in their pursuit of excellence. Uh, some have moved positions. Some have battled injuries. Um, they've had setbacks. They've, they've had minor things that have maybe not worked out, but all of them uh, are going to be extremely successful in life because uh, just because of the things that they've done here and, and uh, the people they've become over the course of the five years. As always, Matt, good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Simmons is a very capable quarterback, one of the better quarterbacks NDSU is going to see in this conference. I think the defense in general has to play well, and we've really seen Josh Hayes come alive these last couple weeks. I think he'll have a big game again today. Josh Hayes, 5'11", 186 out of Lakeland, Florida. North Dakota State getting set to take the field here on Senior Day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final regular season home game for 14 Bison seniors. Since coming to NDSU in 2015, these student athletes have led the Bison to a 64 and 5 overall record, a 39 and 3 record in the Fargo Dome, and 35 and 3 in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. They've continued NDSU's reign of eight straight conference championships, won 14 FCS playoff games with three NCAA national championships. They are currently the number one ranked team in the FCS. Let's meet our seniors. Cornerback from Minneapolis, Minnesota, number nine, Marquise Bridges. Running back from Fargo, North Dakota, number 28, Ty Brooks. Linebacker from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, number three, Jackson Brown. Defensive tackle from Champlin, Minnesota, number 92, Jack Darnell. Free safety from Belleville, Illinois, number two, Dom Davis. Tight end from Holly, Minnesota, number 82, Ben Ellison. Cornerback from Moorhead, Minnesota, number seven, Trey Ford. Free safety from Bemidji, Minnesota, number six, James Hendricks. Offensive guard from Blaine, Minnesota, number 68, Zach Johnson. Defensive tackle from Germantown, Wisconsin, number 53, Cole. Karch. Wide receiver from Lamont, Illinois, number 19, Jimmy Kaporis. 
fullback from Fergus, Minnesota, number 39, Garrett Molstrom. <laughs> Defensive end from Warner, South Dakota, number 91, Derek Tushka. And running back from Lakeville, Minnesota, number four, Dimitri Williams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Bison football senior class of 2019. Fourteen seniors taking the field for the final time. What goes through your mind as you're walking through that tunnel? How fast the time goes, right, Kyle? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, you, you come to NDSU, you're a boy. You really are. You grow into a man in your time here, and uh, it, it's it's just an awesome experience to get out of the to get a run out of that tunnel. Especially this year, it was similar for me with Coach Klein. This is Matt Etz's first time being able to do this. This is his first senior class. Um, it's just a special moment. It really is, and it's a special week. Still a lot of big contributors. Look at leaders like Ben Ellis and James Hendricks, the way they have gone through their collegiate careers as local guys and been such huge parts of what North Dakota State has done. We will step aside. We have five minutes, under five minutes to go on the Coors Light Countdown Clock. We'll be back with your opening kickoff and starting lineups after this. Final, final thoughts in this game is to see how the North Dakota State defense moves some pieces around to maybe fill some holes where there's some injuries today on the defensive line and linebacker. That'll be interesting. Maybe some different lineups we have not seen yet this season. I think it's going to be interesting to see what Tyler Roll decides to do. He's the play caller, the offensive coordinator for NDSU. He told us the, this week that, hey, football's a team game. Our offense needs to help that defense out. That means the offense needs to stay on the field. It's code for keeping the Coyote offense off the field, but it's going to be tempting because USD's defensive backs are not very good, and there could be some things through the air as well. It's a team game for North Dakota State today. The Bison offense can really help out the Bison defense. That is, if the offense can stay on the football field. The Bison offense needs to focus on first and second down to make third down manageable. If they can convert on third and short, it's going to be a great day for the Bison offense. Keep the defense off, keep the offense on, and get this thing rolling for NDSU. Kyle? Yeah, thanks a lot, Ryan. Look, I'd have to agree with you. I think NDSU is going to have to play complimentary football today, and the offense is going to have to stay, off the, stay on the field to keep a really good USD offense off the field. But for me, I don't want to talk anymore about this game. I want to say thank you to 14 North Dakota State football seniors. As a former Bison, look, I know what you had to go through. There's a lot of things that go into being a football player at NDSU, and it's a lot more than just a success that everyone sees on the field. So thank you guys for what you have done for this program, and good luck today. I love that, Kyle, and I think that's just perfect. An absolute perfect sentiment to end the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show with. We'll see you at halftime. Enjoy the game, everybody.